About 15 years ago, I bought my first motorcycle. And last week, my son rode his first motorcycle. See, the thing about me is, I absolutely love riding motorcycles. And motorcycles for me, at least in this family, has been just a me thing. But my son's reaction to his first time riding his own motorcycle, I could tell that kid just fell in love immediately. So I figured why not give some advice to people like my son who might be trying to get into motorcycles or just started riding motorcycles. And my very first piece of advice is if you don't have your license, just get your damn license, you fucking idiot. And I'm not talking about your driver's license, I'm talking about your endorsement. Thing that says you can legally ride a motorcycle. This is my son's Honda Grom. He owns it, I don't own it. I traded his Suron for this Grom, but he's only 13 and he doesn't even have his license. This is also his truck. And I get it, I actually rode without my endorsement for a year. I did have my driver's license and when I finally got pulled over, the cop was pretty cool. He gave me a ticket and he said, look, you ride this way, I'll ride this way. Get your endorsement and this ticket will go away. That was my first time ever getting pulled over on a motorcycle. And luckily, the guy that pulled me over was a motorcycle cop. If you're out there mobbing dirty, here's some things that could happen. You could get hit, and guess whose fault it would be? Yours, because you didn't have an endorsement. You weren't supposed to be out on a motorcycle anyway. Two, you can get your motorcycle impounded if you run into the wrong cop. Three, they could make it even harder for you to get a license. And four, it's just more stress on you, so just go ahead and go get it. Riding motorcycles is also a great way to relieve stress, but your motorcycle is not your therapist. You may have heard people say two-wheel therapy or refer to riding is therapy. Listen to me when I say this. Your motorcycle is not your therapist. If you're using the motorcycle as therapy, when you're done riding, all your issues will still be there. Go see a real therapist. That said, riding motorcycles is extremely therapeutic, and if you're thinking about riding motorcycles or you're new to riding, welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. All right, that was a little over dramatic. <laughs> all right, cold start. God dang. Sounds so good. A crop of itch. So if you haven't bought a motorcycle yet, here's one tip. Get the bike that you want from the beginning. I'm not saying start on a thousand cc. I'm not saying start on a 600 cc. All I'm saying is if it's within your budget, just start with the bike that you want in the first place. It's your first bike. You want to make the best memories you can with your first bike. I know a lot of people that regret buying 300 cc. They always tell me they wish they had just gone bigger, but I know in some countries you can't get the bike that you actually want. But if you do have to get a 300 cc, get the bike that you want. That's a 300 cc. <laughs> you just want to make the best memories you can. You want to love your motorcycle and if you don't love your motorcycle from the beginning it's gonna be hard for you to fall in love with this sport when I got into riding there was only two choices for me Dixer 600 or the Yamaha R6 two bikes I really really wanted and I ended up on one of them and I was extremely happy you're gonna drop your bike that's just that's just how it is there's no if ands or buts people who ride will tell you it's not if but when you drop your bike i dropped my bike a bunch of times sometimes it's something stupid like not having my kickstand down and one time i saw my buddy get his pants caught in the rear sets and he dropped his bike at the dmv that shit was hilarious laugh so hard bro <laughs> There's a couple of hotties, that's why. He was checking out some women at the DMV <laughs> as he was pulling up. That shit was so funny, bro. I laughed at him so hard. Holy cow. So here's something that I learned the hard way. My first real crash happened the first year I was riding. And I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. I was doing a wheelie down the road. 12 o'clock it and I got really really bad road rash I didn't go to the hospital and this was also the same year my son was born and I felt like crap because I couldn't pick him up out of his crib my wife had really bad labor and I made things difficult for her for like a week <laughs> very selfish thing to do just rock proper gear I mean like if you don't want to wear the pants at least do jacket helmet and gloves minimum please do yourself a favor if I'm just mobbing around town <sighs> I shouldn't be rocking these dickies, but it's just been cold and my suits, they're not warm at all, man. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be warm making these videos for the guys. But typically in the summertime, you won't see me without a full suit, period. Just is what it is. I've crashed so many times with a suit and so many times without a suit. Every time I crashed in my suit, I got up and I walked away. Every time I've crashed without my suit, 
I was hurt. I'm telling you, every single time. My advice to you, full suit. You already know the bare minimum. Let's move on. <laughs> Shit, I like his hat. <laughs> if you're one of the lucky few who got into motorcycle riding because of your friends, that's dope, man. When I started motorcycle riding, I didn't have friends that rode motorcycles. I had to go find friends that rode motorcycles. How did I do that? Well, I kind of just rode around until I found bikers. <laughs> Facebook groups wasn't a big thing back then. In fact, the people that I started riding with, we started the original Reno Riders uh, in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm still like an admin of that page. My friend still owns the page. We never really post on it. And then every now and then like we'll get like new members. It's it's pretty interesting. But yes, if you don't have friends that ride, go make some friends that ride. Make friends with everybody. Be kind, be polite, be courteous, be generous. You know, if somebody wants to ride your bike and you got full coverage and you know you, you don't care about them dropping it let them ride it i let people ride my bike all the time it's how you build relationships with these people and kind of get to know these people right you'll start to realize how small the motorcycle community is but it's also very large depending on the city that you live in and through that broad network of friends you'll find lifelong friends i'm talking about the people that you relate with even if they didn't own a motorcycle the plus is you guys met through motorcycle riding and now you end up doing a lot of things together besides just motorcycle riding some of my best friends came from motorcycle riding and you'll run into people you don't like in the motorcycle community and that's okay too it's like life right it's like you don't really have to be friends with everybody i think there's that common misconception that just because you ride a motorcycle we can be friends no that's not the case if you ride a motorcycle i respect you because you ride a motorcycle we share the same passion same hobbies but I may not relate to you. So it's gonna be difficult for me to wanna go ride with you or be friends with you. That's just how it is. Try not to spread hate. We only get one life. Let's make the best of it. <laughs> All right, now you've made friends. And if you ride sport bikes, I highly suggest you go do a track day. But don't do it alone. Go do a track day with your friends. Get some instruction from real instructors. Don't get instruction from a racer. Unless they're a racer who's also an instructor, don't get advice from the racer at Two Wheel Tuesday. <laughs> it's not that what they're telling you is bad advice. They probably have some experience and they know a thing or two about riding motorcycles. The thing about racers is they're very competitive. That's why they race. And any advice they give you, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Because most of the times they don't have teaching in mind when they're given advice. Most racers, especially the amateur ones, when they're given advice, they're just trying to let you know that they know more than everybody else in the room. That's just how it is. It's the nature of being a competitive athlete. <laughs> Go do a track day and get some riding experience and riding instruction from a real instructor. <laughs> this next one's pretty obvious. Get as much seat time as possible. Try to ride on your bike as much as possible. Get all the groceries done on your bike. Experience every aspect of riding motorcycles. Do a long ride. Do like a 12 hour motorcycle ride. Go to the canyons. Go to the beach. Go to every freaking two wheel Tuesday you can. Go enjoy the out of your motorcycle my first couple years of riding is the best riding of my life i knew jack squat i thought i was the fastest thing on earth i thought motorcycles would get girls <laughs> i thought it was cool man i was young and dumb but i had a lot of fun okay and that's part of riding motorcycles especially in the beginning people are gonna call you squid because you probably are you're probably rocking an icon vest nothing wrong with that you're probably gonna do a lot of straight line racing again nothing wrong with that i already said you're you're probably gonna crash nothing wrong with that as long as you're fully suited or have some sort of usable gear an icon vest is not gonna save your skin go do some wheelies if that's your thing go be a freaking hooligan man you only live once you're not gonna hurt anybody but yourself riding a motorcycle but be very conscious of this next thing your ego keep your ego in check make sure when you're out there having fun don't forget the name of the game which is to make it back home in one piece all right this guy doing jesus christ bro i wasn't about to have him run in front of me bro you freaking crackhead <laughs> my god dude tacoma never fails man tacoma never fails <laughs> something that i wish i knew when i started riding motorcycles is there's always going to be somebody faster than you there's always going to be somebody with a faster bike there's always going to be somebody way more skilled than you 
you're better off just riding your own ride. That's got to be one of the best quotes from a motorcycle rider that you'll hear. Ride your own damn ride. Your only competition is yourself. Quit competing with other people. Stay in your lane. Ego is the biggest killer of motorcycle riders. I promise you that. Ooh, thumbnail. Ooh, yeah. Our appreciation stops, man. You guys know the bridge. You know the bridge. <laughs> they call, somebody said that's the boob of Tacoma. That's hilarious. Tacoma Dome. Look at this. Look at this thing, man. Woo. So beautiful. I love it. I love riding motorcycles. It's my passion. It's addicting. This thing becomes a drug. 15 years of this, man. 15 years of my life doing this. It's crazy. There's times where I'm like, you know what? This is the last year. I'm not doing this anymore, though. Huh. But then there's times where it's like, dang. I can't not see myself not writing. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, man. I love this bike. I love all bikes. That's so fun. Let's see if there's any oil dripping. Ah, it doesn't look like it. I wonder if like the oil that was like on here was from the little cover. I haven't seen any oil dripping in, in a while. I still don't. But look at that beautiful gold chain, man. Gee whiz. I love it. I love this bike. Speaking of chain, keep up on your maintenance. Now I'm not saying you gotta buy the best race oil. A lot of people will swear on 300V. It's a very expensive oil. I think it's like over a hundred dollars for like a jug of that stuff. I put it in my bikes. <laughs> but when you're first riding, you're first starting off man. I think I was putting like Rotella T6 in my R6 for like ever dude. Forever. <laughs> I was using T6 for a while, dude. I was broke, man. But being broke is no excuse, okay? Here's some things I wouldn't skimp on. Tires. Definitely get the best tires that you can afford. I made a tire video if you're looking for, like, longevity or stickiness or track day. Go check it out. Find a company that you like that manufactures great tires. I really love Pirelli. And I rock Pirelli all the time now. But Pirelli is also a very expensive tire company. And if you can't afford $500 in tires every year, you might want to research some other companies. There's a lot of great companies out there. But for me personally, I want to trust the tires that I'm riding. And sometimes that means spending a little bit more money. So yeah, save some money for those kinds of expenses or maintenance. If you know your tires are old and they're showing wire, just don't ride, man. Just don't ride. Just save up some money sell a couple things that you're not using in your house for me that's like a million things and make sure your bike is in good shape don't ride with leaking fork oil don't ride with terrible brakes don't ride with a shaking head don't put yourself in a dangerous situation at the sake of a few minutes of fun man motorcycles are not going anywhere this is not something you should rush and the value of a motorcycle should be measured in how Big your smile is. If you're having fun on a thousand dollar Suzuki Jixxer 600 that you bought that was wrecked and you rebuilt, that's all that matters, man. The ego stroking bullshit <laughs> and the look at me, I ride a twenty thousand dollar superbike BS. Forget about that. I don't care if you ride a Honda Grom or if your thing is like those three wheeled spider bikes trikes what matters the most is how much you're having fun that's it motorcycles have been a part of my life for about 15 years making motor vlogs has made it really really fun again as you can see i pretty much ride by myself these days <laughs> and i talk to myself inside of a helmet but honestly i don't care man i've been through all those phases of motorcycle riding i was even a founder of a motorcycle club did that for about 10 years i'm not a part of that life anymore but i have had a ton of fun while it was fun <laughs> when it became too political i just kind of stepped away some of those guys i still consider family and we were friends before the club we'll be friends after the club as well <laughs> god man i love this bike let's go get coffee Woo. You guys want some revs i love revving on this bridge because there's nobody around <laughs> Fuck yeah, boy. Riding down this hill is always so sketchy. <laughs> Woo. Ah, 
After a few years, you might get bored of riding motorcycles and you may think it's time to quit. Personally, I think you should sell your motorcycle if that's the case. Here's why. You won't know what it's like to not own a motorcycle after riding a motorcycle for so long until you don't own a motorcycle anymore. <laughs> and if you find yourself feeling like, dang, I want to get another motorcycle, that means it wasn't time for you to stop riding motorcycles yet. Some people quit riding motorcycles way too early. And I think that's a shame, man. I think you shouldn't quit unless you know for sure that you're done. Life happens, kids, marriage, you might have gotten hurt. It's not a big deal. A lot of my friends have quit riding motorcycles. It's a very dangerous sport. It's a very dangerous hobby. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with experiencing it for a little bit and then saying, you know what? That was fun, but I'm done. Yeah, coffee time? No. <laughs> They're closed. I guess I'll just make coffee at home. <laughs> Now, I'm at that point in my riding career <laughs> that I want to try other motorcycles now. I got the Grom again. I still have the Ninja 650 that I need to finish up. And part of me really wants to try the Tawono. Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> the thing with the Tawono is, it's pretty much the same exact bike as this. Obviously, it has a different transmission gear ratio. So I could, to save money and time, just take the Tawono top triple yoke, take the Tawono handlebars, and put them right on this, baby. <laughs> Essentially, that is what a Tawono is. It's an RSV4 with handlebars. And I know naked bikes are known for torque, but this is an RSV4. I got all the torque I need for the streets. Baby. <laughs> Maybe it's just uncomfortable crouching down, you know? Doing this for so long on these types of bikes, whew, it's very taxing on your body. And you'll notice, usually it's a lot of old people <laughs> riding <laughs> naked bikes like me. <laughs> it's very rare to find a young person on a hyper naked. I'm not saying they're not out there. I'm just saying there's not a lot of y'all. I would say very early on to try many different styles of motorcycles. But I think when you're young, you're just kind of like, nope. I'm just going to ride these, <laughs> whatever these might be. For me, it was super sports and super bikes. That's just my hard headedness though. It might be different for y'all. If you have the ability to, try out all kinds of motorcycles. Something I've never tried and I've always wanted to try is riding a dirt bike in the woods. But then I rode my Suron in the woods and I realized I don't like getting dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so the dirt bike life might not be for me, but a true supermoto, you guys know, I've been wanting a DRZ. Goals and plans, man, goals and plans. How did it feel to ride your first motorcycle? It what did fun. it feel like? Like I was sitting down. It didn't feel any different. Like, how did you like it? It was good. There was no, like, epiphany? No, not really. Like, dang, this is what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> I remember the first time I rode my bike, I, I learned motorcycles on YouTube and then when I went to go buy the bike, I picked up the bike from the dude's house and actually that was the very first time I rode a super sport. That was the first time I rode a real motorcycle. And I think I rode it home in like first gear or first or second gear. Luckily he didn't live that far from my house. My mom followed me home and then my first day of actually riding by myself, I was like, Damn, this is so much fun. I can see myself doing this forever. And of course, 15 years later, we're still doing <laughs> that same shit, man. <sighs> that being said, here's my last bit of advice. Don't forget where you came from, man. When you've been riding as long as I have, help these new kids out. I'm not saying don't call them squids or give them shit. I'm just saying, give them some advice and some life lessons that you learned while you've been riding motorcycles for this long. <laughs> My God. Shut up, ass These kids can be annoying, I get it. But they're just getting, <laughs> shut up, bro. But they're just getting started. Give them as much advice as you can and show them some love. We got enough hate in this world. Let's keep the two wheel life as positive as we can. I love you guys. Yo, we got our first member, Sleepy Nats. That's what's up, fam. Dude, thanks for the support. I'm gonna get you some stickers. I think you're local. Let's meet up. If you guys wanna be part of my lives, just join. It's $2.99. Helps this channel out. If you can't, it's all good. <laughs>